Thank you. And so today I'm here to explain why it's time to be your own doctor. So I started my career as a family physician in Mississauga, Ontario. And the practice I joined took care of a lot of patients, including those in nursing homes and retirement homes. Now, I noticed very quickly that a lot of my patients were taking pills to manage their chronic conditions like heart disease, blood pressure issues, arthritis, and diabetes. And I rarely had more than 10 or 15 minutes to see these patients. That wasn't what I got taught at medical school. I was supposed to spend a lot of time getting to learn to know them and about their lives. And then there were the nursing home patients. Now, for many of them, they were there because of their complications of their chronic conditions, to a point that it disabled them so that they could no longer live independently at home. You might not be surprised by this, but many of them were on 10 or more medications a day. Wow, what a cocktail. And I used to think, these are uppers and downers, because many of these medications, one of them was chasing the side effect of the other one. You know, now that I think about it, I may have been better off giving them a prescription of a beer or a glass of wine every day. You know, one of the things is when I stepped out and got back into my car after I visited them, was I used to ask myself, is this the way to celebrate one's end of life in a place where you're deteriorating and for far too many, few family visited? Now, I'm going to suggest that many of you think that it's inevitable to get sick. And so we pray that we have great doctors and hospitals nearby in case a crisis happens. I think this is unfortunate because this is a reactive model. Now, the practice I had, I didn't have enough time to teach patients to take care of themselves. So in essence, by default, I was contributing to their illnesses and disabilities over time. I don't think that was what I signed up for when I started medical school. So I had to think outside of this traditional disease care model. So what did most people do? They go back to school. And I did to think that I could learn about how I could manage this healthcare system differently. So the penny dropped for me one day in my class. And there's a golden rule in business. And that is to mitigate risk almost at any cost. Now, many of you are entrepreneurs and you own your own business. How many of you would sit and wait for a crisis to happen? And yet, I would suggest that far too many of us do not mitigate our own disease risks. Now, by default, because I am in a disease care system, I would be part of the problem. But I'm here to say to you that I am now part of the solution. So after I finished my MBA class, I developed a preventative, holistic medical care model in my practice, and I'm actually deploying some of those same principles in the businesses of my patients. So today I'm here because I want to talk to you about the importance of changing the conversation from understanding that our healthcare system is a reactive and costly one, and that we need to become proactive because it not only saves money, but it saves lives too. Now we're in 2017. It's the beginning of the gray tsunami. And the, for the first time in history, there are more people over the age of 65 than there are children under the age of 15. Now, what does this mean? It means that chronic disease is on an epidemic rise. There will not be enough hospital and nursing home beds for all who need to be institutionalized and need one. 
and there'll not be enough doctors to deliver a disease care traditional model. And there'll certainly not be enough money to pay for all the care if we continue to deliver it the same way. But I do believe that there is a way out of this healthcare challenge. And that is, we need to start activating proven, low-cost, healthy lifestyle behaviors so it reduces the chances of us getting sick and not have to enter this costly medical system today. This is called a wellness strategy. Now, many people would say to me, well, you know what? My disease risks are predetermined by my genetics, perhaps, but I would like to say that your genetic expression is determined by how you carry out your life, whether you become sick or healthy for a longer time. So I'm here to say to you that wellness is not voodoo. Wellness strategies anchored in science are effective. Now, why should you believe me? I'm, I'm just a family doctor. But I'm going to suggest to you that my proof is in Nobel Prize winning science. In fact, that proof is found inside of you at the tips of your chromosomes called your telomeres. Now, your telomeres are like the tips of your plastics on your shoelaces. They prevent your chromosomes from prematurely unraveling and then getting critically short. And how slowly or quickly you burn those telomeres will depend on how frequently you engage in negative lifestyle behaviors like drinking and smoking, or being injured or being chronically ill, and also being exposed to pollution and chronic stress. All of these things accelerate your telomeres in shortening, which then increases your risk of developing all chronic conditions. Now, what can you do today to slow down that burn rate and also regrow your telomeres? It starts by being more active, eating better, and sleeping more. I can hear your voices going, that's simple. But how many of you do this well and every day? And I'm going to also suggest there's more. You must practice mindfulness practices and have a fulfilling life purpose in order for your telomeres to regrow. Now, I know it's really, really hard to take control back of your life because we all have busy lives. And it's, even though we want to integrate healthy lifestyle behaviors back into it, it's really hard. But I'm here to show you how you can take back control of your life and your health. Now, it begins as simple as becoming health literate. Most of you have a cell phone. And inside of it, there's an app. There's a health app that can track your lifestyle and your vital signs. And then in the near future, there's more. In the comfort of your own home, you're going to be able to very soon use specialized probes that test your blood, your urine, and your saliva and get results in real time. And when you mix genetics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to it, your software will tell you when you should exercise, what type of exercise, what you should eat today, when you should go to bed. And best of all, I think, your 3D printer at home will print out the exact precise amount of supplements and medications you need for that day at the right dose. Yes, I did say a 3D printer today does print medications. Now, you can also contact your health professionals virtually via video conferencing to discuss all those results. Better still, because you're connected now to your health providers, they will give you a call if you are falling off track. Now, maybe that's all kind of interesting to you, and you're going to say, where do I start? So I'm going to suggest that maybe you should start testing your genetics and do your full genome and get it decoded. That $1,000 genome has arrived. And if that's too much, let's talk about 
pharmacogenetics because you can now genetically understand which drug works for you at what dose so that you'll no longer be a victim of trial and error prescribing. You know, we all want to know what foods we should eat. So no more abstract ideas about eating right for your blood type. It's going to be precise. Eat right for your genotype. And also, understand your food allergies and tolerances so that you know what's good for your body and don't eat the things that your body doesn't like. And then vitamin D, our sunshine vitamin. Genetically, we know some of you don't make vitamin D very well, and if so, you should get your vitamin D tested by blood. But in fact, I think you should test all your vitamins, all your minerals, and all your organic amino and fatty acids so that you know precisely if you need to supplement or not. And we know that hormones play a very important role in metabolism and weight management if they're out of balance. So you need to get your hormones tested like your insulin, your growth hormone. And these two hormones are also impacted by your stress hormone, cortisol. Now, mental health is a big issue, and I would encourage you to understand the levels of your brain chemicals. These neurotransmitters can be balanced, and therefore, it's your first step in developing mental resiliency. Now, those are all very leading-edge tests, so I'm going to suggest that you just start by understanding and gain insights from your blood pressure, your weight, and understand how many steps you're taking every day and how many hours of sleep you're getting. And you can journal your food. All of this information, together with your medical reports, can be shared with your health professionals. In turn, they'll be armed with more information to help you understand how you can develop a more personalized health action plan. And they'll be able to add reminders and tasks to keep you on track. All of this can be attainable in its functions on one platform, where you put your medical and your wellness information in one place, in one app. This is called a patient health record, where you are now looking at both your life and wellness files. Now, if being proactive about your health sounds like a good idea, you must be at the center of your own health journey. And you must now take control of all your health data and certainly become your own primary care practitioner. No longer should it be doctor-centric, but patient-centric. And so it's really important for you to now engage in your own health care. Earlier, I spoke about the gray tsunami. And I would suggest that this generation is going to stress our healthcare system and challenge it. And we must ensure that it survives for them, but also survive and thrive for our children and grandchildren. And certainly, life is for living to its fullest. And we should be able to enjoy our cottage and go on ski trips with our friends and family. But I always suggest that it's equally important that you can self-care with dignity in the comforts of your own home at the later age stages of your life. So here's my perfect health action plan. I want to wake up one day and discover myself dead, but in heaven, knowing that I've lived a long and healthy life, but also a very fulfilling one. So I'm here to say to you that growing old does not mean that you need to be frail and disabled at the end of your life. You can be your own game changer into determining how that end of life looks like for you by focusing and integrating proven wellness strategies into your life. Now, it's my responsibility as a doctor to look for solutions that keep my patients healthy. But I think it's also time for you to take more personal responsibility about your well-being. We need to act together now. So I'm going to close this conversation by a very great quote that Einstein put out. And you cannot solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. You must learn to see the world anew. My ask of you today is to see your health care anew because your quality of life 
depends on it. Thank you.